briefly, uh, the, and, um, the flood frequency equations that are being developed for California, they were last updated in, in 1977 in the uh, process of, of, of publishing new regressions in the next couple months. So I wanted to give an overview of, of the equation that in in stream stats once they've been published. And I mention is the U.S. reports now for the flood frequency use the annual exceedance probability instead of a recurrence interval, which is just basically the um, reciprocal of recurrence interval times 100, to, so that's in percent. So a like year flood is the 1% percent probability, which means every year there's a 1% chance that, that that discharge would be exceeded. And if you're interested in about uh, there's a publication the USGS put out uh, talking about the change to the, the terminology in here. And uh, so, so flood frequency project in California, we use the guidelines in Bulletin 17B. Um, there's a group called Hydrologic uh, Frequency Analysis Work Group, uh, HFOG, that are, are trying to implement the recommendations that were in Bulletin 17B, uh, some improvements, and, um, and they're trying to get you know, an updated in 17C. And so during this study, we incorporated some of these new methods, and I'll briefly go over a few of them here. First, I just want to mention, you know, we take the annual peak flow data for a gauge. Here's a long-term gauge that goes back to the bees. And um, so take this annual peak flow information, fit it to a, a Pearson Type 3 distribution based on the guidelines of Bulletin 17B, and it's of the discharge, so it's the log Pearson Type 3, and it's a uh, um, pointer up here. So it's a, of the mean of the logarithms of the annual, and then the uh, K, which is based on the skew and standard deviation. So I'm going to talk a little about, about the skew and how this study handled that. Um, apply that, that equation fitting those points to get the flood frequency analytics. And you, when you have short term records, you, you get quite a bit into uh, uh, you, you come up with a regional skew for the for the and use that to weight it to get better estimates. And there was a um, in Bolton 17B, there was a plate. One, and it had the skew values for the entire nation, and it was done data by me, so it's so it's dated. So for the California study, there was a report that came out last year that did a regional analysis and, and came up with the skew. It was using Bayesian GLS. It's a new approach, and uh, one of the recommendations H Fog has for doing these to get a better estimate of the skew. And so this, uh, so California incorporated this and did a study. And put out a report. If you're interested, here's the, the link to it. Basically, the skew instead of a map, spatially, it's a function of that, that elevation. So we incorporated this um, this skew in our estimates for this, this project. And then there's something new is B has methods for incorporating historical uh, information, but there's a newer approach called expected moments algorithm. Or Incorporate, is that incorporate even more historical information? So the systematic data or that's at the gauge, and you might have historic information like you you knew during that that you had a, a discharge that was above that value in, in some range there. So you can incorporate that information, or you can know, it through some interval discharge. You know, if, if there was none at all, you, you know you can incorporate that less than a given value. So you may uh, gives you more uh, flexibility and, and able to adjust. More historic information to get better estimates, and, and it's a new method that, that's out in, um, in California study incorporated that. Also, there's no outliers, especially in, in the desert, where if you try to get to it, it'll occur. But your upper end, where it's more important for these flood frequency and fit well. So, so there's a method called multiple grub spec test that you're able to uh, take out multiple liars and, and get a better fit up brand where you have your hundred year flood and, and, and higher floods there. So we incorporate this method which is also a new method. 
hundred and uh, seventy-one guys that we looked at throughout the state. And for regional regression analysis, we came up with different regions where we have equations. And it's the seventy-seven report. There's some differences. The upper coastal plain. There's a region here with separate equations. The central coastal plain. And then the, the coastal plain here. And then we got the Sierra Nevada. And then this is called the Lahan. And then the desert region here, which is kind of a unique uh, region. And then we'll be talking more about that. We had to do a little complex analysis there to come up with equations. And then we also have this uh, undermanned area where there's only two gauges in this area, and they they uh, had, I believe it was low flows, or they weren't the same in any other region, so it's kind of its own region, but there wasn't enough gauges to, to develop the undetermined region there. Okay. So for the regional regression equation, we we, we come up from, come with uh, equations to predict like the 100 year or the 1% flood based on uh, exploratory variables, based on characteristics like the drain area, the uh, the uh, elevation and there's fish it's, uh, it's supposed to be to a power I guess this the running there anyways that's capital A to the power B so those coefficients there there in this study we looked at 19 basin characteristics and here's just a, a list of them found for all the regions of Nevada in the in the desert that the equations of uh, drainage area and precipitation and Finalized, so I didn't include the coefficients, but this is to get an idea that, that the equations in each of those regions, you have to determine the drainage area and the annual uh, in that region to estimate. And for the Sierra Nevada, we found a condition of elevation, especially on the on the lower end. And there, it was uh, the drainage and precip wasn't predicting on the lower elevation, so we included that in the equation. Get better estimates on the lower elevation. And then I'll turn it over to, to Nancy and she'll talk about the desert region and uh, about it. Okay, um, let me get my point here. Okay, okay, so um, unfortunately, I got stuck a majority of the time updating flood frequency in the desert region of California. And um, there's been two previous studies um, that have tried to um, pin down coming up with at site flood frequency estimates, as well as uh, regional prediction equations uh, for age sites in a notoriously um, challenging area. So it's not just unique to California, but the western United States. We have um, numerous zero flows and low flows. We're also a victim of having short annual peak records that very highly variable peak flow data um, that are that succumb to flows um, due to convective um, sources as opposed to big regional events coming in off the Pacific. Um, the uh, standard LP3 fitting, the log Pearson type 3 fitting that Tony just talked about, really doesn't work at all in the um, uh, in the peak or for peak flow data in the desert, and is recommended in Bulletin 17B, as what um, Tony described. Um, flood frequency estimates they're improved by weighing the at site skew with a more robust regional skew, and so in our previous report where we updated uh, regional skew for California, that was developed for regions outside of the desert region. So we wanted to do uh, better estimates in spirit of um, using guidelines in Bulletin 17B with the LP3 distribution. And, um, hold on a second, sorry. And uh, because of the problems of these outside site peak flow data um, at, in these desert regions, we wanted to um, weight the at-site standard deviation, and we wanted to um, weight the at-site mean with more robust estimates of regional estimates of both a regional standard deviation and a regional mean. So in our new report, um, we kept the old um, the old regional C value of zero from the Blakemore Thomas uh, study in 1997, but we developed our own regional standard deviation and our own standard uh, or our own mean, a regional means to estimate um, 
for the um, to wait with the outside estimates. What we found is, you know, just as it was probably like a skew could be the standard deviation, we couldn't find an explanatory variable to um, properly, uh, you know, characterize the outside variability and standard deviation. So the best estimate we came up with was using um, a WL or a weighted least squares uh, model, and we came up with a constant standard deviation of 0 0.91. Then for the mean, we actually did find an explanatory variable. Um, the basin characteristic for um, drainage area we found related um, to the outside, could explain some of the outside variability in uh, the, the mean. So we came up with a regional mean value um, as a function of drainage area. Um, I'm going to show you two extreme plots of the flood frequency that we were up against. Um, so we have the benefit of using this new um, EMA map. Method, um, as well as um, the multiple grubs back test to identify low outliers. And um, the red line shows you the flood frequency estimate um, using at site information. The blue line in the center is the LP3 um, fitted um, estimate using uh, the wing of the mean, real mean, standard deviation, and skew. Unfortunately, this is a short record site, it didn't have any zero flow. There were low outliers, um, but it really doesn't have any variability. And so this actually had a standard deviation of 0 0.31, and the black line basically um, outweighed most of the information at the at site, um, at that site for the flood frequency for the site estimates. This is opposite extreme. Um, so it's a short term record site, had six zero flows. All those low flows were um, found to be low outliers. Unfortunately, the outside standard deviation was a 0.18, um, but because it was a short-term record site, didn't get a lot of weight in the final um, uh, frequency estimates. Just to give you a range of fl uh, flow values for this uh, site, it actually the lowest recorded discharge non-zero was 2 CFS, and the bigger estimate was, uh, or the bigger point uh, discharge recorded was 10,000 CFS. So this variability that we had to deal with. Um, we came up with the regional prediction equations for ungauged basins. We took basically in the spirit of just the law of Pearson type 3 distribution. We seamed together the regional skew. Um, uh, so we have the regional skew in the K term. We have the regional standard deviation with the regional mean all together. Um, so basically the, the uh, prediction equations in the desert um, are a function of um, drainage area. And the average standard errors of prediction for these regression equations uh, ranged from 214% um, all the way to 856% for the um, basically the 500-year event. The reason you have such high standard errors is because um, it's difficult to accurately describe the pre uh, predicting flows in this uh, region of notoriously extreme variability. And these, um, but these standards are actually um, they're low 